Tired of dealing with annoying flies, fruit flies, and gnats in your home? The Zevo Flying Insect Trap is your ultimate solution. Don't wait. Check out the link in the video description now to get your Zevo Flying Insect Trap on Amazon and enjoy a bug-free home today. Survivors of a military-style troubled teen academy subject to decades of abuse allegations say conditions inside the school were so horrific kids were allegedly driven to suicide and treated like slaves. The Bethel Boys Academy was founded in 1978 by Reverend Herman Fountain in Loosedale, Mississippi, and operated for 30 years before it was ordered to shut down following years of scandal. In various lawsuits spanning three decades, Bethel Academy staff were accused of administering extreme physical punishments, including whipping, waterboarding, imprisonment, drownings, dog attacks, and brutal beatings, all while allegedly denying students access to necessary medical care. For years, the school, which charged $2,800 per month for tuition, was also accused of forcing children into slave labor on the school's grounds and in the surrounding community. In a class action lawsuit filed in 2003, Former student Morgan Stubble claimed he didn't attend classes at the academy and instead was forced to work cleaning the school grounds, maintaining lawns, and doing construction work in private homes and a nearby farm. Former Bethel cadets Alan Null and Dave Bosher both told our channel they, too, were subject to forced labor in the late to mid-1990s. I paved streets, I sanded a rusty dump truck for them, all while my parents were paying them thousands of dollars a month, said Bosher, who claimed the labor was unpaid. They would put us on roofs and contract us out to farmers, picking pecans, building houses, paving roads and driveways, and charge those people while turning a profit. In lawsuits, other students complained of being forced to work as overnight security for the school, catching any would-be runaways, among assuming other job roles without pay. Life inside Bethel was brutal and at times terrifying, Bosher and Noel both said. Daniel Edwards, who enrolled in Bethel in 1997 as a 14-year-old, agreed. When cadets weren't forced to carry out exhausting physical exercises or instructed to work without pay, they were allegedly being terrorized by staff and encouraged to physically assault one another. For some, the burden was too much to carry. Recounting what he called the worst thing he witnessed during his two years at Bethel, Edwards claimed one of his friends tried to kill himself by swan diving off a second-floor stairwell. He went headfirst, alleged Edwards. He shattered his shoulder, his arm, and his collarbone, but luckily he survived. I just remember crying, and crying, and crying every night that I wanted to get out, but I had to get up every day and deal with it. There were two kids who drank rubbing alcohol, and one of them didn't make it, he further claimed. There was also a kid in there who was gay, and was beaten within an inch of his life after he was found to have been doing something inappropriate in the eyes of instructors. There are so many things that stick out to me that were so horrible. We were just powerless to do anything about it. The controversy enveloping Bethel Boys Academy first began just two years after opening its front doors. 38 children were removed from the facility in 1980 after a 15-year-old cadet fled Bethel's campus and filed assault charges against Fountain and a handful of other staff members. The boy, who was found to be suffering from scabies, claimed he was mentally abused and viciously beaten. The state investigated and the school was permitted to stay open, but trouble struck again in 1988. This time, the state removed 72 children from the facility, following yet more claims of mental and physical abuse. Complaints ranged from severe beatings to forced manual labor, with some children complaining of excessive corporal punishment and no access to medical care to treat their injuries. In hearings before a judge, some children said they were slapped, beaten, awakened at 4 a.m. to run laps around an outdoor track, strip-searched, and forced to stay in a small windowless room, sometimes for days or weeks on end, listening constantly to taped sermons. Others talked of long hours on work crews and said their mail and telephone calls, even to parents, were censored by staff. Herman Fountain was arrested for assaulting a police officer during a welfare visit to Bethel. He served a year in jail for the assault but faced no charges from the child abuse allegations.